So I'd say this little fella here is possibly one of the most important insects we as fly tires try to imitate. This is an olive and you see them all over the place, both on still waters and on rivers. And the pattern I'm going to show you today is a terrific river pattern. It's an olive upright, which is just one of those flies that is a go to in your fly box when you start to see fish rising. Um, it's not the easiest fly to tie, I have to say. And it does take a wee bit of practice, particularly trying to get the hackle bit right, which is uh, certainly something that gives you a little bit of a headache, but it is well worth persevering with. So let's get on with the tie. Um, in the vise, I've got a Hanak 130BL dry fly hook, barbless in size 16. Um, one of the important things about this is that you don't use uh, a hook that's got too heavy a gauge wire. It needs to be nice and fine because uh, what you don't want is for this fly to start sinking. There's quite a lot of material goes into it so that the lighter the gauge of the hook, the more chance you have of it staying on the surface for longer, which is what you need. Um, tying thread is ultra fine Semperfly Nano Silk in olive. And my first job is to lay down a little bed of that on top of that size 16 hook. Just trim off now. The key to this fly is a really nice balance of CDC and the hackle. Um, and the hackle is the bit, as I said, that does cause you a few issues. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two CDC feathers. You can tie this in other sizes, so you can tie it on a 14 or even a 12. And the more weight the hook has, the more CDC feathers you need. A 16 needs two, well that's what I found anyway. This is just about right. So two feathers, tips lined up. And I'm just going to lay those on top of the hook facing that way. So with the tips going away from the eye, like so. Just going to... Just try to make sure, really important, that you leave a good few millimetres of the hook showing here at the, the eye end, uh, because that's where some materials are going in um, to try to make this fly work. So first job is to get this CDC in. I'm just going to do a couple of turns loosely, and I'm just going to have a little bit of a measure. And I reckon that's just a little bit too long, so I'm going to shorten it down. You want it about the length of the hook really, maybe a little bit longer, but certainly not too much. Just squidge that down a wee bit. Once you're happy, lock everything down with your tying thread. Now I'm going to start to take my thread down the hook towards the point, and when I get kind of just about level with the point, I'm going to stop and I'm going to bring my scissors in just lift up those butt ends of the CDC and using a horizontal cut, trim off. And then what I can do is use my thread to carry on going down and you start to get that nice tapering of the body. So you can see it's thicker at the top end and thinner at the end. A couple more materials going in there. Um, I'm just winding my thread back up towards those CDC feathers and I'm going to stop there and then I'm just going to come in lift the feathers away and I'm going to essentially turn those CDC feathers into a little post just like you would if you were tying a clink hammer so a good few thread turns around the front end and then just make sure all of those fibers are up and out of the way otherwise that will cause some problems later on a couple of thread turns over that side too and I want that to be sitting upright like the wing of an olive so I'm going to now bring my thread and do kind of horizontal turns around the CDC this is quite tricky too sometimes because it pings off so just be slightly patient take your time and just make sure you can get a few thread wraps around the very base of that CDC really important that you keep that really down nice and low you don't want it going kind of halfway up because then it starts to look really untidy. Okay, pretty good, pretty happy with that. That's the first stage done. Can be quite tricky. Okay, the next bit 
is to put my hackle in. Now, what I'm using for this is Grizzle Hackle. Um, it just really works nicely and it looks so nice on the finished fly. And I'm going to take a feather and have a little bit of a measure here. So here's the hackle um, that I'm going to use, lovely barring. And I'm just going to pull that out and measure that against the CDC because what I want to try to achieve here is a hackle that's about the same length as those CDC feathers. I would say that's about right. So you can see that they measure about the same. Okay, you don't want anything that extends too long. It starts to look too untidy. So pull off, and I don't want too much. So I've just got kind of a couple of inches of hackle. And I'm then just going to strip off the bottom few bits of the, the fronds of that feather. So I'm left with a little stem like so. Then I'm going to hold that against the hook and just catch that in with the feather facing away off the front end of the hook, like so. Again, all the way down, just a couple of turns back up again. Okay, not gonna wind the hackle on just yet at this stage. The next stage is I'm gonna put the tail on and it's gonna be a Coq de Leon tail. I just think this is perfect for these olives because you know you get, again, that barring uh, looks like the real insect and try and stay as true to the real insect as I can with the tail because this performs such an important job. Um, I'm just going to introduce three or four strands of the Coq de Leon. Again, two turns over the top with my tying thread and just squidge those tail fibres until I've got them about the right length. Don't go too short on this tail. You see the real insect and it's quite a big tail on it. And also the job that the tail does with this, with the imitation, is it supports the rest of the fly. So you'll see that laying on the surface and actually stopping the fly from sinking, which is a really important job, obviously. Otherwise, you're not going to get takes. Once you're happy that it's the right length, catch it all in and a turn underneath. Just display those Coq de Leon fibres out. And then I'm just going to catch everything in up the length of the hook. Pull that out of the way. Just bring my scissors in and trim off those tail fibres like so. Okay, we're in good shape here. So back down to the end of the fly again, back to the tail end that is. Next part of the process is this is going to have a quill body. So um, the quills that I'm using are these ones. These are Polish quills hand-stripped peacock in olive. I really rate these. Um, I mean, as you know, tying with these quills can be a bit of a menace and sometimes they can be a bit brittle, but consistency with these quills is really good. Having said that, and I'll probably break it, but they do tend to go in quite nicely. They're quite supple. Um, if I just put that in at a 45 degree angle, catch that in with my thread, and I want that to be all the way to where the hackle is. Okay, happy. You'll notice the other thing with the quill is that I've tied it in. There's a, a dark side, a brown line, and an olive side where the dye is. I've actually tied it with the olive side uppermost. Now the reason for that is when I start to rotate that quill around the body of my fly, the dark bar at the bottom will be the back. So it will look a little bit more natural. Okay, I've caught that in all the way up to the hackle and the post. I'm going to use my hackle pliers to build up my body now just very carefully and delicately here and reasonably precise with the turns. So you don't really want to overlap the quill. You want kind of each turn to lie next to the previous one, not actually overlapping it. Otherwise you get the body a little bit too bulky. Just nice and carefully up to just behind that post lovely job and then just catch it in and lock it down with my tying thread like so okay trim off now i'm not going to put resin on this part of the reason is that i don't want to add any weight any more bulk to that part of the fly because um, 
it's a delicate operation balancing this stuff up and if I put resin on here that will weigh too much and could pull the fly under the water surface which I don't want. The next thing is a little bit of dubbing, not too much. This is going to be fox squirrel, just a really natural, very fibrous, bushy dubbing. Just got a few too many guard hairs with that one. I just want something like that. Obviously, I'm not going to use that much of it. I just want a pinch, really. And I'm just going to build up a little ball of dubbing that will support the hackle when it goes in. So that's probably enough. And I'm just going to give that a little wind behind my post. Lift up and just chuck one turn in the other side. Now, what I'm going to make sure I do with my thread is that I want the thread to be back behind the CDC and the hackle. So one more turn to put it that side of the CDC feather. Okay, the reason for that is I'm now going to grab my hackle, again hackle pliers coming in, and I'm going to wind it kind of diagonally, so not in a straight line, I'm going to wind it so it goes from sort of a 45 degree angle following the line of my finger. So this, the turn will go there behind that tying thread. So my first turn is there. Whoops, just popped out the pliers. Just do that again. First turn is there. Then as you get there, you go round the back of the post. Just one turn of that over the top again. And I'm just going to pull that CDC back and again round the back of my tying thread. Don't want too many turns of this, but you can already see what a lovely profile this fly has. That's three turns. I'm just going to take one more, and as I do that, I'm going to drop my hackle pliers and lift up my thread at the same time, so I can then lock everything down. Just shorten up a wee bit, and just drop in a couple of locking turns with my thread just behind the eye. Then again, lift up the hackle pliers and bring in my scissors. Now don't go in kind of chopping, just sort of push the tips in until you feel that stem of the hackle and trim it off. Quite a delicate little operation. Okay, take a breath. Right, next part is to tidy all of that up. So I'm just going to push those hackle fibers back a wee bit with my finger and thumb so that they're all clear of the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to bring my tying thread in and just put in a few locking turns again, just to kick everything backwards. And then just grab another tiny little pinch of my fox squirrel dubbing. It's probably a little bit too much, actually. I don't want much of this at all. I mean, it's only going to form just the tiniest little head. Slide that up. Again, brush the fibres back. So that's why it's so important to leave enough room at the head of the hook. So as I wind that round, you can see those fibres from the fox squirrel popping out and giving you that sort of buggy look at the head of the fly. And then I'm going to whip finish. Again, also, this is why you need to use such fine thread, because there really isn't much room to work here. should do us. You can put a tiny spot of varnish on this. I tend not to um, because again it's adding weight and this thread really does not really nicely. Just go in and trim off. Okay we're not quite finished yet because although that looks very attractive I want this to fish as an upright and if I leave these bits of the hackle that will sit right on the water's surface and what I want with this fly is for it to sit in the film, not on the film. It's one of those things that just brings a fish up. So basically I'm going to flip the fly over in my vise, pinch and just give him a bit of a haircut. And then I'm just going to brush forward with my fingers and my rule with this is anything that kind of pops up underneath the fly when I brush forward gets trimmed off like so. You see there's a couple more there, look. Little stray ones. Okay. Just 
just a little bit more hairdressing. Done. Okay. So, there's the finished article. Now, I do just want to show you one other thing with this fly, which is how it looks when it sits in the water. Um, you can see, as I drop it in a glass of water, special testing tank, sorry, I didn't mean glass of water, special testing tank. You can see the profile from underneath is fantastic. You can also see that because this fly isn't too heavy, uh, even with that quilled body, it still manages to be suspended in the surface film, not through the film. If you want to tie this as an emerger, uh, which is another pattern that I'm going to be looking at a little bit later on, um, you can do so on a clink hammer hook with no tail and a little bit more CDC around this head. But I think that's a terrific fly. The fish do too. It's a very natural pattern, a crucial piece of the armory of a chalk stream angler, or to be honest, an angler who fishes anywhere where olives like this hatch. I hope you've enjoyed the tie. Um, I hope you get on okay with it. Remember to practice, especially with that, that hackle, um, which is probably the trickiest little bit of it. Um, and if you do get to tie it and uh, it all goes okay, I hope you get a few fish rising on it and you enjoy the process of seeing something that you've tied get swallowed by an enormous trout. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.